Well, let's let's get going. It's seven o'clock here in a chilly Wednesday morning here in Santa Fe. Let's get get settled. We're sitting on the floor, legs crossed, hands in our lap, right hand, top of the left, palms up, thumbs touching. Same position with our hands if we're sitting in a chair, but with our with our feet flat on the floor, parallel. Backs upright. Try not to slouch into, into your sofa, your chair. Imagine this, if there is a string connected from the top of your head, the crown of your head, going down your spine to your, your cossacks, holding you, holding you just, just slightly tight your back upright as if someone's gently tugging on that string. Eyes closed. Just imagine as if you're looking down the bridge of your nose to a space a few inches in front of you. Mouth just slightly open with the tongue resting in the back of your, your teeth towards the, the palate. It'll keep us from dribbling on ourselves as we do our meditation. Let's just focus on our breath. Try not to let any anything going on in the in our room or outside, any noises or smells distract us. It's, you know, it's okay if there something does gain your attention, but don't try not to chase after it or let your mind wander. Just bring your bring your attention back to your breath. Let's relax the muscles in, in our head and just work our way down. Start by relaxing muscles in the crown of your head, your forehead, cheeks, ears. Just try to relax those muscles. Release any tension you may be holding in your neck or your shoulders, your upper body. Let's just focus on our breath.
Again, today we'll, we're going to do a meditation on the Buddha, on Shakyamuni. So I think most of you know, Buddha is just a Sanskrit word that means fully awakened and typically refers not only to Shakyamuni, the, the founder of the teachings that became known as Buddhism, but also any person who's attained enlightenment. I begin by reciting the refuge prayer three times. If you want to say it along with me, please do. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Let's generate some love and compassion as we set our motivation and reflect briefly on the predicament of all beings. Their wish to experience true happiness, the inability to obtain it, and their wish to avoid suffering and their continual encounters with it. In order to help all beings and lead them to the perfect peace and happiness of enlightenment, think that I myself must attain enlightenment. And for this purpose, I shall practice this meditation. next to a visualization of the Buddha in every aspect of well, this visualization is made of light and that is transparent and tangible and radiant. Imagine at the level of your forehead, about six to eight feet away is a large golden throne. It's adorned with jewels and supported at each of its four corners by a pair of snow lions. <clears throat> These animals are in reality manifestations of bodhisattvas and have white fur and a green mane and tail. On the flat surface of the throne is a seat consisting of a large open lotus and two radiant discs representing the sun and the moon, one on top of the other. These three objects symbolize the three principal realizations of the path to enlightenment. The lotus renunciation, the sun emptiness, and the moon bodhicitta. Seated upon this is the Buddha, who has attained these realizations and is the embodiment of all enlightened beings.
Imagine that his body is of a golden light and that he wears the saffron robes of a monk. The robes do not actually touch his body though, but are separated from it by about an inch. He is seated in the full lotus Vajra posture. The palm of his right hand rests on his right knee. The fingers touching the moon cushion below. This signifies his great control. His left hand rests in his lap in the meditation pose and holds a bowl filled with nectar. which is the medicine for curing our disturbing states of mind and other hindrances. The Buddha's face is very beautiful. His smiling, compassionate gaze is directed at you and simultaneously toward every other living being. Feel that he is free of all judging, critical thoughts, and he accepts you just as you are. His eyes are long and narrow. His lips are red. And the lobes of his ears are long as well. His hair is a bluish black. And visualize that each hair is individually curled to the right and not mixed with the others. Every feature of his appearance represents an attribute to his omniscient mind. Visualize rays of light emanating from every pore of Buddha's pure body, and they reach every corner of the universe. <clears throat> These rays are actually composed of countless miniature Buddhas, some going out to help living beings, others dissolving back into his body, having finished their work. Feel the living presence of Buddha and take refuge in him, recalling his perfect qualities and his willingness and ability to help you. Make a request from your heart to receive his blessings to help you to become free from all of your negative energy, misconceptions, and other problems, and to receive all the realizations of the path to enlightenment. Having accepted your request, a stream of purifying white light, which is in the nature of the enlightened mind, flows from the Buddha's heart 
and enters your body through the crown of your head. Just as the darkness in a room is instantly dispelled the moment a light is switched on, so too is the darkness of your negative energy dispelled upon contact with this radiant white light. As it continues to flow into you, filling your body completely, I'll recite the following prayer three times. To the Guru, Founder, Bhagavan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, glorious conqueror Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. Please grant me your blessings. To the Guru, Founder, Bhagavan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, Glorious conqueror Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. Please grant me your blessings. To the Guru founder, Bhagavan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, glorious conqueror Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. Please grant me your blessings. We'll now recite the Buddha's mantra, chanting together seven times and then saying it quietly to ourselves for a few moments. <clears throat> Taya ta om muni muni maha munaye so ha. Taya ta
Feel that all of your negative energy, all of your problems, any subtle obscurations have been completely purified. And that your body feels blissful and light. Concentrate on this for a few moments. Now visualize that a stream of golden light descends from the Buddha's heart and flows into your body through the crown of your head. The essence of this light is the excellent qualities of his pure body, speech, and mind. The Buddha can transform his body into different forms, both animate and inanimate, to help living beings according to their individual needs and particular states of mind. <clears throat> With his speech, he can communicate different aspects of the Dharma simultaneously to beings of various levels of development and be understood by them in their respective languages. His omniscient mind sees every atom of existence and every occurrence, past, present, and future. It knows the thoughts of every living being, such as his awareness in every moment. These infinite good qualities flow into every part of your body. Concentrate on this blissful experience while again repeating the mantra. Taya ta Feel that you have received the infinite, excellent qualities of Buddha's body, speech, and mind. Your body should feel light and blissful. Again, let's concentrate on this moment. We will now absorb the visualization. Visualize that the eight snow lions absorb into the throne. The throne into the lotus. And the lotus into the sun and the moon. They in turn absorb into the Buddha, who now comes to rest at the space just above your head, melts into light, and dissolves into your body. Your ordinary sense of I that is unworthy and burdened with faults and all of your other wrong conceptions disappear completely. In that instant, you become one with the Buddha's blissful omniscient mind in the aspect of vast empty space. 
concentrate on this experience for a few moments, allowing no other thoughts to distract you. Imagine that from this empty state, there appears in the place where you are sitting the throne, lotus, sun, and moon, and upon these yourself as the Buddha. Everything is of the nature of light, exactly as you had visualized before in front of you. Feel that you are Buddha. Identify with his enlightened wisdom and compassion instead of with your usual incorrect self-view. Surrounding you in every direction and filling all of space are all living beings. Generate love and compassion for them by recalling that they too want to achieve happiness and peace of mind and freedom from all problems. Now that you are an enlightened Buddha, you can help them. At your heart are a lotus and a moon. Standing upright around the circumference of the moon, reading clockwise, are the syllables to the Buddha mantra. Tayata Om Muni Muni Maha Munahe Soha. The seed syllable moon stands at the moon center. Visualize that rays of light, which are actually your wisdom and compassion, emanate from every letter and spread in all directions. They reach the countless sentient beings surrounding you and completely purify them of their obscurations and delusions, filling them with inspiration and strength. While imagining this, we'll again recite the Buddha mantra. Tayata Om Muni Muni Maha so tayata om muni muni maha munaye so tayata om muni muni maha Think, now I have led all sentient beings to enlightenment, thus fulfilling my intention for doing this meditation. Visualize that everyone surrounding you is now in the form of Buddha and is experiencing complete bliss in the wisdom of emptiness. You should not worry that this meditation has been a sham and that you have not helped even one person achieve enlightenment. This practice is known as bringing the future result into the present path. It's a powerful cause for our own enlightenment. It helps us to develop firm conviction in our innate perfection, our Buddha potential. 
and that what we've just done in meditation, we will definitely accomplish one day. When you're ready, we'll come back together to dedicate. We'll finish by dedicating all of the positive energy and insight we may have gained from doing this meditation to our own eventual attainment of enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Dedicate the merit to our gurus, our spiritual teachers, our guides, that they have perfect health and long life. And they all may attain enlightenment. Thank you.